Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today I am going to illustrate the Latvian Gambit, which only 0.1% of people know how to play, I will share the chess opening tactics, traps and strategies that lie in the Latvian Gambit, and you can even defeat a strong opponent, even if they have studied many openings excluding the Latvian Gambit, you can still defeat them, I played against this Gambit in front of Torch and Fabiano Caruana on my other channel, so let's get started without wasting any time. I mean, Torch started the game with e4, we have e5, knight f3 and f5 on the board, and here white has two options, to capture either the f5 pawn or the e5 pawn, first, we will look at the variation behind d takes e5, which is a very reasonable move that 90% of players go for, then you can play knight to c6, and white has lines such as bishop to c4, playing d3 or, of course white cannot capture the pawn on e5, let me show you the variation behind the bishop to c4 line, which opens this diagonal widely. Instead of playing d5, another possible move is e4, kicking the knight out right away, and you can see that the white knight has no squares to go to, he has to retreat to his starting square because the queen is covering the diagonal, after the knight moves, you can play d5, and after the bishop moves, you can play the cunning move queen to g5, which is very crucial in many variations of the Latvian gambit, white could play king to f1, but that move is just weak, therefore, some may consider g3. But then you can just pick up the pawn, after the knight moves, knight to f6, d3 may appear to open up the bishop's diagonal, but don't worry about that, you have a6, after exchanges occur, you can place your queen on the f3 square, attacking the rook and after the rook moves, you have the cunning move. In the Latvian gambit, you need to play aggressively and use all your pieces to attack the kingside, in this position, you are attacking the f2 pawn, white might think they can block the attack by playing d4, but they don't know you can sacrifice a piece and play knight to g4 because you are going to checkmate them, this happens around moves 9 or 10, and you are going to checkmate white, the best move for white would be to play bishop to d3, of course, which gives them positional advantages. But if your opponent doesn't find that move and panics by playing rook to f1, they will completely blunder their position, you can expose their blunder by playing knight to h2, and after the rook moves, you can bring your queen back to the h5 square, if white plays bishop to e3, hoping to escape the attack and play queen d2 for a long castle, it's already over for them, you can play like a professional thief, as if writing a letter telling them you will rob their treasure in the middle of the night. No matter what they do, you will just rob their treasure. Then you can play knight to f3, forcing the king to move, bishop to h3 will follow, and later you can even checkmate them, this position is just over for them. So, going back to the position, we discovered the move behind bishop to c4, let's now explore what happens if white plays d3, you can push your pawn to d5, and after the knight moves, the knight square bishop is blocked, the only active piece is the bishop on g5, but you can pick up the pawn and block with your bishop on e2, white will try to play a long castle, settling down like a married couple, but the real problems begin after marriage, and you can increase the pressure on white by playing d4. Attacking the knight, knight to e4 is a good option to consider, but if white plays knight to e2, hoping to play knight to g3 to attack your bishop, you can place your knight there, after knight to g3 followed by bishop to e6, gaining access to the rank, many players might consider king to be one as the best move, but this is actually a mistake, the best move for white is to play c4, but I guarantee no one would find this move, it's like an alien move. No human would want to play it because it looks like it disrupts white's structure, almost 99% of humans would play king to b1 because it seems natural, then you can make a crushing move, breaking their defense by playing bishop takes a2, sacrificing the bishop, followed by knight to b4, as if a monkey has jumped onto their roof, after the king moves, queen to a4 will arrive with the threat of checkmate, a few moves later, your rook can go to d5 to access the files, and white's position will be disrupted. Even if they capture the pawn, you can play rook to d5, attacking their pieces, white may exchange pieces with bishop takes f6, but that doesn't matter because after the knight moves, you can always play queen to a2, forcing the king to move. 
Bishop to g5 will follow, launching a hidden attack and your opponent's king is trapped because your pieces block its escape, a 69 IQ player might try rook to d2, but then you can deliver a final blow with queen to a1, sealing your victory and declaring that no one can play like you. To revise, we explored the tactical motifs behind e takes f5, now let's consider what happens if white plays knight takes e5, then you have the move knight to f6, which is a top engine line, blocking the queen's attack on h5, white might consider bishop to c4, attacking the pawn on d4, many players might also think of capturing the pawn on a5, but this is not a good move for white because you can pin the knight with your queen, and white might try to copy with queen to e2, you can then play d6. Attacking the knight and capturing the pawn later, there are no strong tactical motifs in this variation, it's not our preferred approach. And let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. Stress occurs when we feel tested by a situation that life has presented to us, in truth, such situations are nourishment for our growth. Back to the position, instead of playing knight to f6, I would prefer to play queen to f6, which is what I played in the game, your knight has to move, two moves that white can consider a knight to c4 or d4, d4 looks very strong, and it is a move many players like to consider in this position, then, you can kick out the knight with d6, and after you capture the pawn, you open up your bishop's diagonal. You can also play knight to c6, bring out your other knight, play a long castle, and be satisfied with this opening, don't always play tactics and traps or sacrifice your piece early in the opening, as that might not give you the actual advantages you want, the real advantage you set up in the Latvian gambit is by playing queen to g6, seizing control of the pawn, which prevents the bishop from moving, after bishop to f4, a few moves later. You can see that white is trying to hold the position by pushing the pawn to d5, bishop to c4 is possible, protecting the pawn, White is also preparing to castle kingside by playing queen to d2, though he would prefer to castle queenside, since he needs to secure his king's safety first rather than launching an attack, which is torture's approach. I played c6 because I wanted to prepare d5 to solidify my pawn structure, Torch responded with d5 because he didn't want to let me play d5 myself, therefore, I played b5, attacking the bishop, and after the bishop moved, I played b4, attacking the knight, the knight didn't move to a4, instead, it retreated, after c5 happened, white could have played a short castle, which is possible in this position, the point is that white's king is actually safe, after knight to h5, the bishop can move back. And I would like to play a short castle, I have an open file for the rook, the bishop is well positioned, and all my pieces are well activated on the king side, which is very favorable for me, your knights are stuck in the center, and it's a very strong position for me. Going back to the position, Torch didn't play a short castle because he didn't want to give me any potential advantage, instead, he played knight to c4, so far, so good, but by playing this move, he created a weakness on the g2 square, as you can see, I played knight to h5, and later I can capture the g2 pawn, White responded with rook to g1, of course, I could have captured the h2 pawn, but from my perspective, it would be a bad move because the king could advance. And white's rook would control the open h file, which would be crucial for him. So, instead of capturing the pawn, I played queen to h3. So far, so good, both sides were playing well, after a3 was played to attack on the queen side, I castled short, in the following moves, you can see how we maneuvered our pieces, bishop to d7 came into the game, followed by g6, torch was determined to attack my queen side, but he lacked the security needed, I could capture the pawn, and after the exchanges, my pawn on b6 was very secure, and I was preparing to push it forward, torch's position became vulnerable, so he played a tactical move in the middle game. Can you guess what torch played? Try to think a little, it's a very tactical move, the move is knight to e5. The move is cunning because if I capture the knight, he will simply play d6, attacking my bishop and simultaneously threatening my king, which would create a very bad position for me, so, instead of capturing the knight, I moved my knight to b6, 
after the king moved, we had c4 in the game, kicking out the bishop, the knight then moved to c6, here, many players might think I could capture the knight and then the bishop, but hold on, your knight on b6 is under attack, so you need to secure it first. I played bishop to f6, attacking the other knight, and after captures occurred on both sides I played rook to a8, getting access to the a1 rank. Here, many players, including you, might think of playing king to b1, but this would be a completely foolish move, you know why. Because I would laugh at you and play my 6000 rated move, which is bishop takes b2, sacrificing the bishop, I would then threaten to play rook to a1 check to capture your queen, you might be tempted to accept the sacrifice, but after rook a2 check, your king cannot go back to b1 because b takes c2 would win your queen with just one pawn, it's very simple, after the king retreats to c1, I could play rook to a1, or I could capture the pawn on c2, threatening queen to a3 check, followed by promoting the pawn with another check, this position would be completely winning for me. Going back, we saw that playing king to b1 is a very bad choice, that's why Torch played a very cunning move, can you guess what defensive move Torch played in this position? Try to use your brain, which has been collecting dust and spider webs. The move is queen takes h5, it's a cunning move, sacrificing the queen as a tempo, because if I capture the queen, knight takes f6 would fork my pieces and win my queen back, since the pawn is pinned, instead of capturing the queen, I played another cunning move, if torch can play a cunning move, why can't I? I played rook to a1, forcing the king to move, then captured the queen, after some exchanges, you can see that I have a rook and bishop for your knight and a full piece, which gives me a winning position, slowly but surely, I will win the game, exchange all your pieces, promote to a new queen and eventually checkmate you, I hope you enjoyed the game, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye take care and see you soon.